So what we're going to do today is this happens to me in bioinformatics all the time. And in fact, I almost prefer it this way. Like usually somebody will come to me with a project and say, Hey Mike, you know, I've got four people with a particular cancer and four people without that cancer. I want to do a study and look at that. And I'll say, do you know if is, has anybody else done this? And they'll say, I don't know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and I go, well, have you looked at their data? And they're like, no, you can't do that. You know, it's, it's other people's data. And I'm like, if they published on it, you can absolutely and utterly take their data <laughs> and you can publish on it. You can combine it with other things. You can do whatever you can toss it up, throw it around, take a bite out of it, wherever you want. It doesn't matter. That is a nice thing is that if you're funded by the, the government, right, to do research, this is us taxpayers paying for you to do that. So you have to make that, there's a law that you have to make your data available to everybody out there, right? For me, this is just a giant playground. I love this, right? I, so usually when somebody comes to me with a project, I, I ask them what they do, and then I go out and I find a bunch of data out on the web and then basically bring it back and say, hey, this is what I found, and you've got this little pile here. Maybe we should use this. <laughs> Eventually, a lot of times, they'll say, yeah, that, that'd be great. Sometimes people are just very funny, especially people that have been doing research for a long time that are really kind of used to this, is they don't want to use other people's data, and it's a shame, and they are holding themselves back. I guarantee it, for sure. Well, we're going to find out that data, so here's what I want you to do is, who has heard of TCGA? All right. All right. So here I want you to put in the Cancer Genome Atlas. Okay. Since we're on this, how do you download an MAF file? <laughs> Those are horrible. No. We are not going to go over that. Actually, after class, if you want, I can, I can talk to you about it. Uh, you want to use the uh, fire hose it's associated with it. Have you seen that? So my mentor just like free balled me, man. <laughs> He's just like, you need to get an MAF file from this thing. And I was like, <laughs> MA, he, MAF? Uh -huh. um, Mutation and annotation. Oh, frequency. Yes. You, we, yes, you can do that. I can show you how to do that. <laughs> All right. This is a... It, it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now. So everybody's here, right? Yeah. Okay. Honestly, I think this is a crappy website. I think our country, the USA, does a terrible job basically displaying and sharing data with other people. And I honestly think some of that's on purpose. I think a lot of these researchers don't want people to look what they're doing, right? They want to they basically sit on their own data and just basically pick from it whatever they want and they want to keep it in their little nice little lawn and you know pet it occasionally but no one they don't want anybody to get to it. Well today we're going to get to stuff so um, and again this I'm not going to use this much because again I think it's it's not a very good resource and I'm going to leave that in the recording because I totally believe that. So here's what we're going to do is, so go down here. What we need to do is we're going to, let's see. Oh, the GDP data? Yes. Okay, so I have the GDP. Where, where is that? Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, so here when you go down, go to access TCGA data. But you can also, they've got other tools on here. I'm just going to show you this real quick. You don't have to, you can click on it if you want. All of this stuff down here is available for you to use on their site. I've gone through every one of those links, and in my personal opinion, I, for my purpose, they're not very useful. About the only one, if you want to download data, is what the really one you want is the fire hose. Okay. But all these other things, you can go and, and kind of look and see what they are. They're just... They'll display data, but as far as you actually querying it yourself and downloading it so that you can use, it's not very user friendly, which is a shame. You would think our, you know, 
National Institute of Health would do a little better job. Yeah, no doubt. Like one of the biggest causes of death in this country. Eh, we'll just throw it in some crappy thing. Usually what happens is you get some postdoc works on something, puts a display together, or does creates a website for say their dissertation or I don't know, some project, and then they go away and then it just falls in disuse. Like everybody just drops it because you know, no one, no one's gonna publish it. They're not getting much credit for creating this, right? Science is geared for publications and grants and it's BS. <laughs> like we need more infrastructure, we need more roads. And like this would create so many new papers if people would just put in the effort to just try to combine all this information. Yeah, it's terrible. Okay, so let's go access TCGA data. Okay, everybody on this? You can see on the right, these are the cases that they have, the number of cases. What's, what do they have the most of? Lung. Lung, yes. Uh, last time, that's why, it's always good to get into something where there's lots of samples and data to look at. But there's also, as you can see, breast cancer, I think is the second one. They have, in their data set, they have 9,129 cases associated with 79,000 different files. What's nice about TCA, DCGA is theoretically, if it would worked a little better, you could get expression data. There's expression data in here. There's microRNA. Remember that thing, you know, with the water, that slide I showed you after the waterfall and all the epigenetic and all the data things? Basically, all that's in here. We can access that. So here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to exploration. So what I want you to up at the top here, hit exploration. Everybody on here? Okay, cool. This is just showing you kind of, you know, what's going on here. We can also go to genes, which I always, I always find this interesting. So if we go to genes here, we can see which are the most mutated genes. Which is the most mutated gene? Is it a copper robber? Cop, yep, P53. And he's right by uh, MUC16, which is a definitely a, a robber. Okay. So as I mentioned before, I think we're going to, you know, what we want to do is explore breast cancer. So what I'm going to do is over here on this, on the left, it's, we've got cases over here. So what we can now do is we can kind of limit this to particular forms of cancer. So what I'm gonna do on, under primary site, I wanna click breast cancer. And you'll notice the genes change now because now we've filtered this just to look at breast cancer. Now it's PIK3CA is the next in line. MUC6 went down. Okay, everybody do that. What is interesting, and I spent a lot of time on this website trying to find where, what you can do now though is, is you can go down, you can go to program. These are just different, um, basically groups that contributed to the data, different projects, and then you have different disease types that you could actually, and this is telling you the numbers of those. What you'll notice though, is most of these are neoplasias and most of these like sarcomas, there's not very many data sets on that. What I'm also not seeing is I'm not seeing triple negative. Like they don't have a class for that, at least that, none that I could find. You got primary tumor, you can take, you know, do you want just metastatic tumors, all that? So we can go back up here. Now let's go to clinical. So it's the tab to the right of that. We did say in triple negative though that there was, in the triple negative cancer, we did see um, that the majority of those there's a high percentage of black and American or uh, African American uh, individuals, uh, also Hispanic or Latinx, but what's that? 
What's that? E ethnicity? Yeah. Well, we're, yeah, I guess, it, yeah, that's true. That is under. It is, you're right. Okay. That's what you look here. They go, ethnic. it's like, it's either Hispanic or not Hispanic, which is kind of, I don't know, it's not very. Let's just look at uh, African Americans. So click on African American for race. As you can see that if, so when I click on it, now we've gone down, if you look up here, we've got 175 cases now associated that came from a African-American individual. And as I click back and forth, you'll notice things change, right? So this is all, everybody in their database with with breast cancer. And then when I click on this, the, the race one, now we see actually the survival rate's gone down and the genes, the most mutated genes have changed a little bit. What I'm trying to do is get you to see that as we're filtering, the graphics actually reflect the filters that we put on. Okay. So what we can do is we can look down here. We can actually go to, go to the next one right here, go to mutations. So as we see here, we can put on African-American, black. As we're looking at these genes, P53, PIK3CA, but basically what you do is as you're going down, you're kind of getting an idea of what's going on. Cell surface, basically things that are connecting the cells, metastasis, the, the cells have to get dislodged from its neighbors. So you see a lot of adhesion molecules. Cadherin is also part of that. P10, so you've got an apoptotic pathway as well. So this would be a tumor suppressor. But this kind of gives you an idea of kind of what's going on here. And I did see, for some reason, I don't see why it's, let me do the oncogrid, grid. hold on. Typically when, Here's what happens is when I'm looking at a particular type of cancer, one gene that always usually shows up mutated is, is this gene called Titan, T-I-T-I-N. Look it up real quick. Find another tab. Tell me something about that gene. Why do you think that thing is getting mutated in all these different cancers? And it's probably, it's going to be a reason you probably don't see right away. Anything unusual about that gene? Yes, it's large. It's huge. It's monstrous. It's a big, big gene. So why do you think it's getting mutated in all these cancers? Do you think it's, it's uh, contributing to the, the cancer itself? Or what, what do you think might be going on? Totally, and that is one thing you guys need to think about when you're actually looking at some of these mutations is, is my gene getting mutated because it's absolutely critical for the, you know, for the functioning or for continuing of the cancer, or is it just a byproduct of the fact that say maybe uh, DNA repair has gone haywire and now all these mutations are happening and they're not getting repaired. And so that, therefore, since my gene is so huge, that's why it's getting more mutations. You have to think about that as well. It's not just the gene that's getting mutated, but figure out, you know, is it because of size or is it because, you know, there's something specific going on? And you can kind of look on these. I mean, what's kind of interesting, so if we go back to genes, so I'm here at the top part of my screen. We can click on, say, PIK3. If you notice here, so if we look here, it's basically a signaling molecule. In this particular cohort, out of 175 individuals, 40 of them show a mutation in this gene. And then we can look across all of the different cancer cases. And as you can see, it probably plays a role in all, all kinds of other cancers as well. 
we can click on it. So click on PIK3CA. So if you click on it, you can kind of go down here. This is basically just telling you some information on it. Again, the signaling molecule. Some of the disease types it's been found mutated in. But then you can actually go down and actually look at where those mutations are occurring. Right? They tend to be, what you'll notice with some of these cancers is they tend to be in very specific places. That actually, if we go back, so actually hit your, go back to the, your previous screen. Let's do actually GATA3, I think has some pretty unique mutations on it. So hit GATA3. So again, if we go down to where it's showing the mutations, you can see all of them occur at this area here. And these are big time ones, frame ship stop gain. This isn't like missense. This is like big, nasty mutations. GATA3 is a transcription factor. What do you think happens in this area? If we're going to mutate this gene, what do you think, what do you think that, that area coordinates to? Why are all these mutations occurring in that area and not others? Ideas. I mean, you don't have to be very specific. Uh, no, probably not a splice site. There, what I would say there is probably this is where it binds to the DNA. And actually somebody, I, I just read a, a paper yesterday on it. Somebody actually did all these mutations to see what would disrupt the binding of GATA3. And they just induced random mutations into the, into the gene and see if it would bind to the DNA. And what they found is the ones that didn't allow it to buy kind of replicated where they needed, where the mutations occurred, right? Again, remember all these things are structural, like, you know, if I'm trying to disable the cop, I'm not going to shoot at his body armor. I'm going to aim for his head, right? And that's exactly what these mutations do is the, the mutations that actually stick are the ones that are actually in areas that are critical for function. Okay. We can go back here. So that was just kind of a, a quick, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on TG. TCGA, again, I'll, I'll talk to you after class and we'll, we'll maybe go over and try to find out what file you need. But to, to be honest with you, it's just, it's not a very, no, <laughs> I'm so mad at our country. Like, you know, we're supposed to be leading, you know, research and we put out this crap. You know, this is supposed to represent all of this data if put together correctly could just benefit everybody but everybody's so damn selfish and considering about their career that no one really pays attention to this or really wants to do this, which is a shame. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a more user-friendly site. This was actually done by, let's see, is it the one? Here it is. Why am I not? Oh. So in this one website, so you can see that Titan is the third largest. I think this is just um, individuals affected or uh, black and Hispanic. But what you would see though is if you're getting a gene that's really large and it's getting mutated and probably it, what's probably occurring in this type of cancer, if you see a lot of like shrapnel in there, you know, genes that probably don't play a role in the function that are getting mutated, is that there's something going on with DNA repair. So I would say that, you know, DNA repair is lacking in this one and it potentially is associated with, you know, a race. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, what I want you to do is put in R2 genomic.